A typical task that is required is to calculate the line of length and the area of polygon. Now, this could be for different applications like cadastral, sewage planning, road networks, agricultural activities, or even aviation. Normally, we will want to use a projected coordinate system for our calculations. Now, these are usually only feasible in smaller regions where the plane approximates the ellipsoid. Over larger distance, we will need to do more complex calculations over the sphere. Let's go ahead and learn how to do it using QGIS. Stick until the end to learn a neat trick that will improve your workflow. In QGIS, to be able to make measurements either for lengths or for areas, we need to tell it in which systems we want to do it. We can do it in planning metric or we can do it in ellipsoidal. If we haven't done any adjustments for the property of the project, then for sure it's going to be in non and planning metric if we haven't done it before. So how do we set these in QGIS? We go to project properties and in this general tab, you have several options here like project file, home, title, etc. And one of those is the ellipsoid. Now, by default, this ellipsoid is set up in as non or planning metric. So by default, you will have it like this. So if you haven't done anything before upsetting the ellipsoid, this is going to be the default. In our case, we probably want to do geodetic distances, especially if we have very large areas. And I work in aviation mostly and we use WGS84. So for me, it makes sense to just set up here WGS84. WGS84. So for the ellipsoid, I'll just go search for WGS84. So this is a big list that we have in QGIS, and then we need just to scroll down to where we see WGS84. Now notice it says EPSG7030 instead of 4326, but this is correct because the ellipsoid is actually set as EPSG7030. Now for the units of measurement, here we can define if we wanted in meters, kilometers, feet, etc. So I'll use kilometers and for the units for the area measurement, I will use square kilometers. So this is the first step to set up which ellipsoid we want, because if we do not set the ellipsoid, the calculations will be done only planning metric. And sometimes that can lead to bad results. So let's close this one and let's go to now the first way in which we can measure areas and distances. Now, now, here we have the measure tool on the top. So if we click here on the measure line, it's already in kilometers. And we have two options here, Cartesian and ellipsoidal. Now, if we expand the info box, it's going to tell us here that the coordinates are being transformed to the chosen ellipsoid. So if we measure in ellipsoid, it's going to have one value and in Cartesian, a different one. However, if we do not set the ellipsoid, it's going to be still in planning metric. So let's start by doing Cartesian and measuring and I always use the snap in here so I'll do a new one for this line from this point to this point and you can see that it's telling you 150 kilometers here and another line from here to here so that's 120 kilometers that's about right because that's the exact distance that I drew these lines using Cartesian measurements and then a final from this to this part here's 100 kilometers now if we do the same using ellipsoidal you will know Notice that it's going to be slightly different. So the first one is 150. 0.057 kilometers and that's because it's taking into account the curvature of the earth now the farther we are or the larger the area we are going to be starting to notice a little bit more this curvature of the earth now let's do the same for an area so if i go let's say to this part here i can switch instead of measuring a line i want to measure an area and first i want to do in a cartesian of course this is going to be not so exact because you know it's hand drawn it's one possibility it all depends on what you want to do now further we're going to be doing automation so this one is 3869.602 kilometers and if we change to ellipsoidal it's 3869.664 so you can notice that there is a difference there between both of them 
Now, one key thing here is that the projection that we use is very important. It's normally using 3857. The one that we have in web maps is not really a good idea. So you really want to find a projection that is fit for your purpose. Now, another way in which we can derive this is by using the identify tool. So if we go to the identify tool here and we click on this polygon from the derived actions, we can check that we have the area in Cartesian here, 3858.740. And in ellipsoidal, it's telling us which ellipsoid we have selected is 30 3858.807 so that's a very handy way to do it now let's do the same for the line so if we select the line this one we go to the derived and you can notice here that the length in Cartesian is exactly 150 kilometers that is exactly what we wanted to use but in ellipsoidal is 150.057 so this is okay and it's given us a way to measure this line so what do we want to do this now in an automated way because we have several lines we have several polygons we don't want to do it this manually so what we can do now is to actually calculate some fields so let's start with the lines i'll unselect this just zoom to this one and open this attribute table here and what we want to do is add a new field so i'll open the field calculator i'll create a new field let's call this one length i'll use kilometers let's use decimal here and 12 3 with the precision and we can search here if we don't know which function we need to use we can use the length and notice that we have length length and length 3d i'll focus this in length so the first one is about character string but if we scroll a little bit down we don't see it there's a geometry variant and it tells us that it calculates always using planning metric in the spatial reference system of the layer and the syntax is length geometry so to call the geometry we're going to put length and the geometry is using this parameter because normally in the documentation this gives you like geometry from well-known text etc but we normally want to use the geometry we already have inside and notice here that we have 150,000 because this is in the units of the SRS and the SRS is meters so if you want kilometers like we have here in the out field name we actually need to divide by 1000 click ok and there we have we have now calculated our cartesian length in kilometers now let's do the same thing for geodetic calculations so again we're going to add this new field it's going to be called length geodetic and i also want it in kilometers i want it to be a decimal and 12 and 3 and in this case now how we're going to write it is slightly different because we want to use this function here which says length is going to be returning the ellipsoid if it's set because this is very important if no ellipsoid is set the calculated length will be planning metric so if you get the same result you need to make sure that you have set up an ellipsoid for your project and the syntax is this one here we can just double click on it and notice immediately we have this in the preview so we can click ok and now we can compare visually here and if we want to do the calculation, we can just subtract this one to the other. This is how we do the calculations for lines. Now, let's go and do the same back for areas. Now, for areas, I'm going to turn this one off and save it like this. The area is very similar process. So let's open this attribute table here open the attribute table we already have here the area in square kilometers but it's just an integer maybe you want some decimals maybe you want to check if this value is correct so there are a lot of possibilities here so again open the field calculator this is k file so we got a limitation on the length so i'll probably use something like area cartesian kilometers square so in this case we want to calculate the area and again we have two ways to do it we got this with the dollar sign but since we're working with Partition, we want to use this one area geometry so we got area and then we can call the geometry function like this and this is in meters we want square kilometers so we need to divide by 1 million 1 2 3 1 2 3 okay so that's fine and the output field i don't want to be a integer i want it to be a decimal and probably in this case i will round to three decimal places so something like this okay we got a value here and okay so if you go to the end i got this in square kilometer 
for Cartesian. Now for ellipsoidal, just repeat the process. So again, area probably t kilometer square, and I want it to be a decimal. Let's round. And in this case, for the area, we just use this function here. It's going to be ellipsoid. Again, very important. If you have not set up an ellipsoid, it's just going to do a planning metric calculation as well. So let's double click on the area and go to three. Let's go like this and okay. So now we have our area in square kilometers for the Cartesian and in geodetic. So this is how we can check. Now let's select this one here. So I'll select this one. This is the one that we have tried and I will open the attribute table just with the selected. So we can check that the results are 3858.74. Zeros missing the last zeros just truncating it and 3858.807 for the ellipsoidal one so it's the same results that we got for the identify but now we got it for all the features in our layer until now calculations have been made at a specific point in time so this means that if the feature is altered the length and the area those fields are not automatically updated this is where a dbms with triggers becomes very handy but what if there was a way to do it in QGIS without needing a dbms this is where virtual fields will help us let's see how this can be done in QGIS without any dbms now the way to do it without a dbms is by using virtual fields and now this is going to be a big advantage because unfortunately when we calculate a field if we edit it it's not going to automatically put the values in those fields because those fields are at a point of time but using virtual fields we can overcome this limitation without the need of a dbms so let's do it for the line i'll open uh, the attribute table for the line so i already got this one and i'll add a field that is going Going to be virtual field here probably i'll put something like bf to know that it's a virtual field i'll do the length i want it to be the geodetic length and i want it in kilometer i'll set it to a decimal and now i just need to select my length so again if i don't recall what is the function for length i can just go here and this one is going to give me remember in geodetic and probably i want to round this to just three decimal places something like this value okay i got the same value as this one but this is where the magic actually happens i'll dock this one here and now i'll edit this one so notice something if i move this vertex something like here and i select it and now i save my edit click refresh then this value is going to be updated so again i'll just move this one so let's say i want to move it here and we click the refresh you're going to notice that it's going to be updated so if i add a new feature going to be automatically added the value here 212.304 let's say i want to move this one here it's right now is 100.0039 so again if i move my vertice something like this then i save my edit and then i click refresh i get the new value that i have here so this is very handy but this only lives in our layer so it's not in any other place so this is a very handy tool again similar to how we calculated the length using virtual fields the same thing be done for polygons and calculate areas now in this video i show you how to do some QGIS basics if you want to learn other basics like how to geo reference or how to change the selection color then go ahead and watch the next video